Today we're going to look at ultrasonic inspection of piping welds, ASME B311 versus 313. What's the difference? If you're scanning piping welds, there's a good chance it's either ASME B311 for power piping or 313 for process piping. Here I'm going to discuss a few of the differences when you're scanning and analyzing. I won't do an exhaustive comparison, but I will try to hit the high points. First off, B313 has a lot of categories within it. You've got normal fluid service, severe cyclic, elevated temperature, and then things can get hairy when you get into something like the alternative acceptance criteria and fracture mechanics. I'm going to steer clear of all of that stuff for today. So just take note, when I refer to B313 in this video, I mean anything that follows the normal fluid service criteria. B311 and B313 are both ASME codes. That means we're going to look at ASME section 5, article 4, to tell us the physics of how we do the inspection, and then we're going to find the acceptance criteria within 311 and 313. All right, let's talk about hand scanning versus encoded. So for B313, that's the easy one. They're actually going to let you hand scan that with conventional UT or phased array, but typically what you're going to do is an encoded phased array scan. For B311, you have to encode. In fact, the only time they're gonna let you do any hand scanning at all on a B311 piping weld is to cover off the stuff you can't get with the scanner. Now we'll talk about scanning gain. For the manual inspections, you have to add at least six decibels above your reference level. For encoded scans, just scan at reference. If you scan too hot, sometimes the signal can saturate, and that's gonna prevent us from accurately sizing the amplitude of a flaw. Besides, you can always add soft gain later when you're analyzing. For your TCG or your sensitivity calibration, since both of these are piping codes, you need to use piping calibration blocks. I did a video on that before, and I've also written a paper on that, and I've done a video on doing a TCG. You can check those out in the link below. Power piping and process piping, two different applications, so we should expect that the acceptance criteria are different. 311, Typically things that go boom are going to have a much more stringent acceptance criteria than just process piping. 313 is one of the easiest codes in the world. Our evaluation level is the reference level. So that means you don't care unless the signal gets back up to your TCG line. So for encoded scanning, that's really easy because you scanned at the reference level. So unless the signal hits the TCG line, don't worry about it. For 313, if it exceeds the reference level, then we go to the length table. And the code doesn't require us to differentiate between any of the flaw types. So it's going to treat slag and cracks and lack of fusion all exactly the same. If it exceeds the limit in the table, then we reject the flaw. And depending on the thickness of the weld, your length limit could be anywhere from a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch. For 311, we evaluate anything 20% of the reference level or over. Now, if your reference level is set at 80%, like most of us do, 20% of 80 or one fifth of it is only 16% screen height. That makes B311 14 decibels more sensitive than 313, almost sorta. B311 gets one layer more complicated because they ask you to characterize the flaw. Things like cracks, lack of fusion, and incomplete penetration are treated differently than volumetric flaws like slag and porosity. If it breaks 20% reference level and you think it's a crack, lack of fusion, or incomplete penetration, you fail it right away regardless of the length. But if you've characterized it as slag, porosity, or an inclusion, one of the volumetric flaws, then we actually go back and use the 313 rules. This is the wrinkle in 311. So if it's one of those, then we really don't care unless it gets back up to the reference level. Of course, if it gets there, then we check the length table. Whenever I analyze data, I always do it on the laptop. I just find it easier on the eyes and there's some customizations I can do. So I take it off my sauna test, I put it over here on the software and I set myself up with a customizable palette. Now, I did a video on this a few weeks ago. You can see that I've got a break point, one at 20% reference level and one at 100% reference level. That makes it really easy to analyze either one of these two piping codes with the same palette. 311 and 313 are two of the most common piping codes, so it really helps to know the differences between the scanning requirements and the acceptance criteria. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and thanks for watching.